Hello, my name is Andre Faria, and I'm a Senior Technical Account Manager here at AWS. In this video, I'll demonstrate how to enable Windows Integrated Authentication on RDS for SQL Server when utilizing AWS Managed Active Directory. I'll also be going over how you can create a forest trust between your AWS Managed Active Directory and self-managed on-premises Active Directory environment. This will allow users from an on-premises Windows Active Directory environment to authenticate to an Amazon RDS SQL Server instance while connected to AWS Managed Active Directory. Here's a high-level overview of the environment we'll be setting up today. The first step is to set up an AWS Managed Microsoft Active Directory within our Amazon VPC. A Managed Microsoft Active Directory is required in order to allow users to authenticate using Windows Authentication on an RDS for SQL Server database instance. For this presentation, we already have a managed Microsoft Active Directory environment set up, mad.example.com. We'll then utilize the AWS console to create an Amazon RDS SQL Server database instance and connect it to our managed Microsoft Active Directory environment. Then, we'll create a one-way forest trust between our managed Microsoft Active Directory within AWS and our on-premises Active Directory environment, example.local. And finally, in order to demonstrate how we can authenticate a non-premises user to our RDS database instance using Windows Authentication, we'll connect to our database instance using SQL Server Management Studio. We'll start off in the Amazon RDS console and create a Microsoft SQL Server database instance. In the Engine Options pane, ensure that you select Microsoft SQL Server for your engine type. We'll be using SQL Server Express Edition in this demonstration. As for the engine version, we'll be selecting the latest SQL Server version, which as of this recording is SQL Server 2019 15.0. Within the settings pane, type a name for your database instance. For this demonstration, we'll be calling our database instance test MSSQL01. Once you're done naming your instance, type in a login ID and password for the master user of your database as well. Within the connectivity pane, select the appropriate virtual private cloud and database subnet group for your database. A database subnet group is a collection of subnets that you create in a VPC that are specifically designed for your database instances. For this scenario, I'll be selecting a subnet group that I previously created. Since we do not want public IP address assigned to our database, we'll leave the no radio button selected under public access. Select one or more VPC security groups in order to allow access to your database. In my case, I selected the default security group and another one called database, which allows connectivity to port 1433. In the Microsoft SQL Server Windows Authentication pane, click on the Enable Microsoft SQL Server Windows Authentication checkbox. For this demo, we'll be showcasing the AWS Managed Microsoft Active Directory Windows Authentication type. So we'll leave that radio button selected and then we'll click on the Browse Directory button and select the mad.example.com directory. Once we're done, scroll down and click on the Create Database button. While our database is being created, let's go ahead and create the trust relationship between our AWS Managed Microsoft Active Directory and on-premises Active Directory forests. Before setting up our trust relationship, we must set up DNS conditional forwarders on each domain. On your self-managed domain controller, open DNS Manager, right-click on conditional forwarders, and select new conditional forwarder. In DNS domain, type in the fully qualified domain name of your AWS Managed Microsoft AD. In this scenario, mad.example.com. Now type in the DNS addresses of your AWS Managed Microsoft AD directory under the IP addresses of the Master Servers section. The DNS addresses can be located in the Directory Services console within the Networking Details pane of your directory. With the conditional forwarders configured within DNS, we're now ready to configure our self-managed Active Directory domain for our trust. On your self-managed domain controller, open Active Directory Domains and Trusts, 
Then right click on your desired domain name, in our case, example.local, and select properties. Choose the trust tab and then click on new trust. Type in the name of your AWS managed Microsoft AD and choose next. In our case, mad.example.com. For trust type, select Forest Trust. In this scenario, our only requirement is for our on-premises users to be able to access resources within our AWS managed Microsoft AD environment. So for the direction of trust, select one way incoming. Keep this domain only selected. Now type a trust password. Keep in mind that you'll need this password again when setting up the trust for AWS Managed Microsoft AD as well. Confirm your settings, then choose next. And I'll confirm that the trust was created successfully, then choose next again. We do not need to confirm the incoming trust and choose finish. You'll now see that your AWS Managed Microsoft AD directory is listed under the domains that trust this domain screen. Click on OK and we'll move on to configuring the trust within our AWS Managed Microsoft AD directory. Within the Directory Service Console, click on Directories under Active Directory section on the left-hand side of the screen. Now click on the idea of the directory to be used for the trust setup. In my case, mad.example.com. Within the directory settings screen, navigate down to the trust relationship pane and click on that trust relationship. For trust type, select Forest Trust. In the existing or new remote domain text box, type in the name of your on-premises domain. In my case, example.local. Type in your trust password. Keep in mind that this is the same password you utilize when configuring your on-premises directory. For trust direction, keep one-way outgoing selected. Keep in mind that in a one-way forest trust, the directions of each of your domains must be complementary, meaning that since we selected one-way incoming in our self-managed AD environment, we'll have to select one-way outgoing within AWS Managed Microsoft AD. And now in the conditional forwarder field, type in the IP address of your self-managed DNS server. You can add additional conditional forwarders as well if required. Once complete, scroll down and click on the Add button. Now under Status, you can see that the trust relationship is in the creating state. After a few minutes, the state should change to Verified. Once that's accomplished, we'll then proceed to create a Windows Authentication SQL Server login and connect to our IDS instance using SQL Server Management Studio. Open SQL Server Management Studio and use the Amazon RDS Master User Credentials to connect to the SQL Server database instance. For an Active Directory user to authenticate with SQL Server, a SQL Server Windows login must exist for the user or a group that user is a member of. Fine-grained access control is handled through granting and revoking permissions on these SQL Server logins. A user that doesn't have a SQL Server login or belong to a group with such a login can't access the SQL Server database instance. Run a data definition language command, such as the following example, to create a SQL Server login for an Active Directory user or group. In our case, we just created a login for test user within the example.local domain. Now with our login created, we'll connect to the SQL Server instance as test user. To connect the SQL Server with Windows Authentication, you must be logged into a domain joint computer as the domain user. Launch SQL Server Management Studio, insert the name of the RDS instance within the server name text box, and ensure Windows Authentication is selected as your authentication type. Once that's done, click Connect. You're now connected to the RDS SQL Server using Windows Authentication from an on-premises domain. I hope you enjoyed this session and learned something new. Thanks for watching and until next time.